Okay, I get it. You're freaking out and worrying over the large clumps of hair you're losing daily in the shower. Your once lush, beautiful and thick hair is now dull, lifeless and thinning. And you may have even seen some bald spots. The first thing to do is don't panic. Honestly, it doesn't solve anything and it's likely to make things worse. Now, if you have some questions about your hair loss, whether or not this is normal, whether this is permanent or if it can be fixed and what treatments can restore your hair, well, that's what today's video is all about. So I suggest you keep watching. Hey guys, welcome and welcome back. I'm Dr. K, a family and cosmetic doctor, and I make YouTube videos in my spare time. Now gather round as I'll be imparting some knowledge on all things to do with hair and hair growth. I hope you'll find this video useful and that you'll get some tips on what may be causing your hair loss and more importantly, know what you can do about it. So let's go. Everyone loses hair for different reasons and some degree of hair loss or hair shedding is normal within the grand scheme of things. In order for us to understand the difference between normal hair shedding and abnormal hair loss, we need to go back to basics and learn about the natural growth cycle of hair. Now at this stage, your eyes might start to glaze over, thinking that this is going to turn into a long, boring science lesson. But bear with me, this is actually very simple. Your hair grows in three stages, anagen, catagen, and telogen. The first phase is anagen, and this is the phase where the hair is actively growing. Think of it like when a plant is growing out of the soil, growing bigger and bigger every day into a lovely flowering plant or a tree. This anagen phase can last up to eight years. The next phase after this is catagen. This is known as the transitional phase where the hair growth slows down and eventually stops. At this stage, your plant is no longer growing and instead starts to shrivel up. The catagen phase is short and only lasts for weeks. The third stage is telogen and it's at this point that the hair has stopped growing completely and is now shed away from your scalp. The thing to bear in mind is that our hair doesn't go through all of these stages simultaneously. At any given point, some of the hair follicles are in anagen, some are in catagen, and some in telogen phase. Otherwise, what would happen is that we'd all grow our hair out all at the same time. And then all the hair on our head would also be shed also at the same time, leaving us bald before new hair then grows. It would be kind of like those Play-Doh hair growth models, which would be really weird in real life. It's normal to lose up to 100 strands of hair a day, depending on what proportion of your hair is in the telogen phase. And for most people, that is usually around 10% of your total hair follicles. This is not an exact number, so don't freak out if you happen to lose 101 hairs on one day because it depends on other things, such as how many hair follicles are on your head, how often you detangle, and how you handle and style your hair. Whether or not your hair has been treated, you may also notice that you shed more hair depending on the time of year. People that live in temperate climates away from the equator may notice that their hair shedding increases going into the autumn and winter months. But this is only temporary and your body is able to reset itself back to its usual pattern. So the main point is that I wouldn't worry unless you're losing increasing amounts of hair or you're noticing bald patches or this is associated with other hair problems. This is a very, very common cause of hair thinning. For those of you who were paying attention in class, Earlier on, I talked about the hair growth cycle and told you that telogen is a part of the hair cycle where the hair is shed. Telogen effluvium is a condition where the hair growth cycle goes out of sync and the hair follicles remain in the telogen phase of growth. This causes more hair to fall out sometimes in large clumps and handfuls. Your hair may also look thinner overall. What causes this condition? Basically anything that puts your body out of whack 
and stress is a big cause of all of this. Other things like losing or gaining weight very quickly, such as through crash dieting or getting a gastric bypass, making extreme changes to your diet in a short space of time can cause a shock to the system and drive more hair follicles into the telogen phase. Other things that can cause telogen effluvium include these. A lot of people have also noticed hair loss after having COVID. The tricky thing about telogen effluvium is that it doesn't always happen at the same time as the episode of stress or the trigger, but it can be seen as a delayed reaction that happens several months later without any warning. So I often see people complaining about thinning hair and when I ask them if anything is going on at the moment, they will say no. But then when I probe deeper, it may turn out that they had gone through a period of stress or a major life events some months back. So bear this in mind. The good news is that telogen effluvium is not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. And it's usually temporary. The worst thing you can do if you have telogen effluvium is to stress about it. As tough as it is to hear, stressing over hair loss will only worsen the hair loss. You just need to give it time. And I know it's easy for me to say that. Your hair has to go through all the phases of the hair growth cycle, and it can take many months for the hair to grow back. But the good news is that in most people, it does grow back. So hallelujah, take a chill pill, and let's move on to the next cause. Androgenetic alopecia is another term for male or female pattern hair loss. It is another very common cause of hair loss in men and women. Males tend to lose hair from the temples and the crown of the head, whereas in women, the hair usually becomes thinner all over the head. Androgenetic alopecia is more likely to happen as a person gets older, but can start at any point after puberty. Many women who experience this condition develop it after going through the menopause. This means that hormones may have something to do with it, although your genetics are another factor. It's possible to treat this condition with minoxidil, which is a medication for hair growth. This is available without prescription from most pharmacies. It's not a quick fix, and you do have to be realistic about your expectations. Did you know that certain health problems can cause hair thinning, thyroid problems, chronic ill health, and autoimmune conditions like lupus are the main ones that come to mind. Being low in certain minerals and vitamins can also be linked with increased hair loss. A common thing, especially in menstruating women, is having low iron levels. Having a restrictive diet can also be another reason. If you're worried about this, then I'd suggest to speak to your doctor for a blood test to have this checked out further. If the blood test shows you have low iron, you may be advised to take iron supplements for up to three months, which will gradually top up your iron levels and treat the underlying problem. Alopecia areata shows up as patches of hair loss. It's often linked with autoimmune diseases. What happens is that the body essentially gets confused and turns on itself, attacking the hair follicles. But there is good news still. This condition is not associated with permanent scarring of the hair follicles. So there's a very strong chance that the hair will grow back. Regrowth often starts as soon as three months from when the patches first appear. Bear in mind though, that once you've had one episode of alopecia areata, you're much more likely to get further patches in future. In a lot of people, it is triggered by stress. So this is another reason to adopt a zen lifestyle as much as possible. <laughs> alopecia areata is mostly treated with strong steroids applied directly on the scalp or as injections to the scalp to help speed up recovery. Medications taken for other reasons may also have the unintended side effect of causing hair loss. The birth control pill is a common culprit, and this applies to when you are starting 
or coming off the pill. Other medications include blood thinning medications such as warfarin, Accutane, which is used to treat acne, antidepressant medications including Prozac and Zoloft, beta blockers and cholesterol lowering drugs. If you are on any of these medications and you're worried that they may be causing your hair to fall out, I'd always advise you to speak to your doctor first before taking matters into your own hands and stopping the medication abruptly. Stopping any prescription medication without proper guidance can cause problems. And certain medications, for example, with antidepressants, it might be better to wean off slowly rather than an abrupt stop. And in many cases, your doctor may be able to reduce the dose or switch to a different medication instead. Let me know if I've missed anything from this list or if you want me to cover any of the things I mentioned in more detail. I hope you found this video helpful on what to do if you're worried about hair loss. And if you have, please be sure to comment below and give this video a like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.